Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog and to yet another study with me video. I think the day you're about to see nicely illustrates why exam term is one of my favorite parts of university life. We've got great weather, short bursts of fairly efficient group study sessions and the rest of the day just kind of hanging out with our friends. As usual, I'll be explaining what we're doing in terms of study techniques, but at various points in the day today, I pointed the camera at my friends who are all obviously experts in, in study and revision. So you'll be hearing their thoughts on uh, various study slash revision related tips. Anyway, I wake up at about 8.30 in the morning and lay in bed for the next 45 minutes watching YouTube videos as usual. I then blend some Huel with some milk for breakfast and I usually add a spoonful of instant coffee to turn it into a caffeine plus meal replacement thing that tastes sort of like a Starbucks frappuccino. I then have a shower and get changed in preparation for a psychiatry revision lecture that Jake and I are attending that morning. So we head over to Emmanuel College and we then switch to vlog mode. <laughs> Oh, it's such a beautiful day. It's sunny, it's warm, it's April. We've got exams in about five days time. Strolling through Emmanuel College, it's very pretty. Jake, have you got any advice for students who are taking exams? <laughs> Goodness me, don't be intimidated by how much work people around you are claiming to do, because it's probably all a myth. But how do you motivate yourself to work, Jake? Have, you, have your eye on the prize, <laughs> which is six years with this wonderful gentleman in my case. Aww. One for every A-level, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Jake did six A-levels. Uh, Jake, wh which A-levels did you do? Double maths, triple science and French. And uh, what grades did you get in those, Jake? Come on, they haven't got all day. <laughs> Welcome to Christ College. It's very nice, it's very pretty. We're on our way to one of the lecture theatres. Jake, how do you motiv motivate yourself to go to the gym? I look in the mirror and tell myself I hate myself. What about you, Ellie? Right, lecture finish. That was actually really useful. Like a solid hour of uh, going through various psychiatry presenting complaints. How did you smash your exams? What, what was the secret to your success? It's just the Gandalf principle. What's the Gandalf principle? Well, if you don't you know, study, then... You shall not pass! Hi, I'm Charlotte. I'm a sixth year medic at Emmanuel College. We're going to do some revision, we're going to do some active recall and some clinical communication skills. Because you can know all the stuff in the world, but if you don't explain it well and thoroughly to patients, they won't know what's going on, and that's not offering good care. So yeah, Charlotte's coming over to do some work. I think Alex and Catherine are coming over as well. We're going to do some, like, role plays. Uh, before we switch to study with me mode, I just want to point out all of the supplies that Charlotte's, Charlotte's bought. Charlotte, would you like to explain? Well, you know, when you're studying, you need sustenance. So, British strawberries, grapes, baguettes, some chocolate sandwich fingers, Maltesers, and most importantly, sparkling pomegranate and elderflower pressing and sparkling elderflower. Thank you, Charlotte. And have you got any tips for students who are maybe stressed about exams or like feel like, oh, you know, you know the pressure's kind of getting to them? Have you got any tips on how to how to deal with stress when it comes to exams? I think it's really natural to get stressed, especially when you're doing GCSEs and A-levels and you know that there's a lot riding on it, getting places at college or university. I think it's important to keep some perspective, like, if things don't go the way you really want them to, it's not the end of the world. The sun will rise the next day and you'll be able to carry on. And it's never it's never all over. You can always resit, you can take some time to revise and get some advice from teachers and have a bit of a rethink maybe. So don't pin everything on this set of exams. It doesn't, the grades that you get, um, the, the letters that are written on that piece of paper don't define who you are. And yeah, your worth shouldn't be in what's written on that piece of paper. So that was some really solid advice from Charlotte there. Uh, and as you can probably tell, she's really, really good at talking to patients. So we get down to work properly at around 11.45. And for the first half an hour, Charlotte and I go over the acromegaly and the Cushing examination. So because she hasn't gone over it before, I start off by trying to draw the acromegaly and the Cushing's diagrams that we went over in the last episode. I try and draw those from memory. So that's active recall for me. Uh, and then we look at our kind of master diagram to fill in the gaps and then immediately she tries drawing it out from memory and then I fill in the gaps. So in a way I'm sort of teaching it to her but I'm also active recalling in the process therefore it's useful for both of us. Then our friend Alex arrives and we switch to doing some neuro revision and because a lot of you asked here's a quick look at how I make my active recall spreadsheet. So as you can see I've got Google Sheets open on one half of the screen and I've got a PDF open on the other half of the screen. And what we're doing here is that we're picking various topics within neuro. So we're starting off with MS, multiple sclerosis, and then in the group, we're brainstorming possible questions that might be asked of us in the examination. So the first one, as you can see, is what is MS? And in column A, we write the question, and then in column B, we write the answer. And then we're just kind of building this up over time. For each different topic within neuro, we're asking ourselves what question could be asked, and we're putting it in column A, and then we're working out answers to those questions, putting them in column B. And I'm using a whole host of sort of sources for this. Uh, Charlotte and Alex have their own books open. Uh, I've got Cases for Paces open on the other side of the screen. I've got my own OSCE book open in front of me. So we're trying to use all these different sources and collate them into this master spreadsheet for our active recall. 
And if there's something that we don't understand, obviously we Google it, we Wikipedia, we do whatever we can to work out what the answer is before it goes into the spreadsheet. From around 1.30 to two o'clock, we have lunch. Then from about two to three o'clock, I head over to the post office to sort out some paperwork for the house that I'm hopefully gonna be moving into around July time. So there'll be more on that uh, closer to the time. From around three to 3.30, Jake and I lounge in my room and we're taking histories from each other. So kind of doing a role play. And then we spend about 15 minutes just kind of sitting there and wondering, hmm, what do we do now? We then apply our thing of, oh, if the exam was tomorrow, uh, what would I be least happy about? And we realized that we're not fully brushed up on, on the eyes. So we spend about half an hour revising the eyes, going through some questions, kind of working out what scenarios might come up in our exam. And there's nothing particularly fancy about our techniques for this. We're just throwing questions out there to one another that we think might come up in the exam. So for example, I might ask, right guys, if we get a patient with gradually reducing vision, gradually blurring vision, what are our differentials gonna be for that? What possible things might they have? And then we all kind of brainstorm, come up with some answers, and then someone Googles it and we work out what we've missed. Hey guys, so, been an absolute waste man for the last hour and a half. It's like 5.45 now, and for the last hour and a bit, I've been lying on the bed behind and just having a nap. It wasn't even like a proper nap, I was just kind of lying there with my eyes closed and vaguely listening to Charlotte and uh, Catherine talk about psych stuff. It's, it's very warm, feeling very CBA right now, but I think it's not too bad. We have done some work today. Also, kind of interestingly, um, in the, on the previous study with me videos, a few of you have been commenting saying that you like admire my work ethic and oh my God, you're such a productivity machine. I'm really not a producti productivity machine. I don't really admire my own work ethic. Uh, I'm one of the most wasteman people in this house when it comes to actually sitting down and doing work properly. But you know, I think one thing that I do have going for me in, in, in that regard is that I like to be efficient with my work. So I, I, I would never sit there for three hours and just kind of make notes from a textbook, which looks like productivity, but, but really isn't. So I think that's the key really, like y you can be quite a wasteman in terms of the amount of hours you actually put into work while still kind of doing it efficiently, hopefully. But yeah. Sometimes it's important to take a break in Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is called sharpening the saw. So that's what I tell myself, sharpening the saw. So you're resting now so that you can be more efficient later. I just work outside in the sunshine. So I go outside, sit in the shade, and then I put in headphones and I make sure I, and I start a timer, start my forest tree growing, and then I make sure I actually work. And it worked today. Is that that app where if you touch your screen, your tree dies? Yes! Yeah. Oh my gosh, my trees are like, I just put my phone on do not disturb and that way I don't look at it. So in the UK, the weather is very important. When it's too cold and it's snowing, people are like, we can't go to work. When it's too hot and it's nice, people are like, we can't go to work. So, another reason why I really like working with other people is because then you get a realistic idea of how much of a waste man everyone else is as well. <laughs> but I think, I think like when you're, especially when you're sort of going for A-level exams and also especially at university, if you're kind of working on your own in the library, you get a very inflated idea of what everyone else is doing. And this can make you think that, oh crap, I'm not doing enough work. I don't know what you think about that. Have a biscuit. Hmm. Biscuits are great. Yeah, I think if you spend all of your time in a library or, you know, in a in a classroom, then everyone there is doing revision and they're there with the sole purpose of revision. And so you get a false idea of what everyone else's rest of life looks like. When we were undergrads and we'd spend lots of time in the library, you would think, oh my goodness, these people have been here for 12 hours straight and they've not done anything else. And in some cases that might have been true, but for the two hours you saw them in the library, they were working really hard, but then they also went out and played football or, you know, went out for a meal with friends, went to the cinema. And I think that that whole thing about comparison can be something that people really struggle with. I know I certainly struggle with that. Mm. And I think it's a natural human thing to want to compare yourself to someone else. Say, if they're doing so much more than me or they understand this better than I do or they can do this faster than I can. And that can just be really degrading to yourself and it can put you in a really bad bad state of mind. And I think it's quite important to to support each other. I think as a as a group of medics at our college, we've worked really hard to try and collaborate and share resources. Yeah, and absolutely. It's We're not it's not a kind of get yourself over the line. It's kind of work together to make sure everyone does well and does so remaining happy and healthy. It's a team effort, definitely. One of my favorite parts of university life has actually been exam term. And people say that this is weird, but actually if you're if you're working in the, on the same stuff as your friends, you've got like a good kind of study group going where you're all kind of doing your own thing, but you're doing it in the same place. It's just so social. It's like, I think exam term is one of the most social times of the year because we all have this thing of, right, we're gonna sit in the same room and, and work. That's one of my favorite parts of, of uni life. And we used to do that in school a little bit as well. Also, I wanted to show everyone that I'm drinking tea out of a mug with the beautiful Ali's face on it. Yeah, um, a friend of mine from, from ISOC uh, got me this mug in second year. It says Paxoc Ball Whoopee because apparently yeah. Paxoc Ball was the only thing I talk about for a very long time. <laughs> so yeah, if you, if, you, if you guys might think, might like mugs with my face on it to drink from, then uh, <laughs> let, let us know in the comments and we'll add that to 
our <laughs> our line of merchandise in addition to the active recall of the way of life and uh, save the day and, and all these other like revision mottos that we have. <laughs> so at this point it's six o'clock and I fully intend to do work for the next hour but I spend the next hour researching how feasible it is to make merchandise for like posters, mugs, t-shirts uh, and I start doing a few designs for our sort of revision catchphrases like active recall is a way of life. Uh, in the meantime, Charlotte and Catherine are actually being productive, they're doing some work, but then Jake comes to the room and he starts playing the piano. Uh, you might recognise the song. So, starting in general. It's seven o'clock and we're pretty much done for the day. None of us is really going to do any more work. Uh, we sort of decided around half past six that, okay, it's too sunny, it's too nice. We're not going to bother doing a hardcore revision session tonight. So we planned for all of us to meet up in my room at 9 p.m. to play Avalon, which is our new favorite board game. One thing I'd say on that front, like, to be honest, it's very easy to get into this mindset of exams are the only important thing in my life right now. And especially, you know, if your parents are kind of giving you that whole grief about you've got to be working harder, you've got to be working harder. I don't think that's necessarily helpful a lot of the time. Uh, we all fairly independently decided that day that we weren't going to do that much work. We still managed a fair bit. It was fairly efficient, fairly kind of reasonably efficient group study, but it was by no means a super productive day. And I think that's fine. Like when the weather is sunny for the first time in ages and you've got everyone, everyone together, it's, it's totally okay to just decide, you know what, I'm only going to do a little bit of work today and I'm going to spend the rest of the time playing board games with my friends or having a pizza with another friend or, or whatever. So that's something that I like to keep in mind, especially in exam term, that yeah, it's important to, to have intense focused bursts of, of study, of revision, but there's no real need to really go hardcore with it because, you know, to be honest, it's all fine. It's going to be all right in the end. The, the result we get on this exam is not going to define our worth as a human being, as, as Charlotte alluded to earlier. So, yeah. We spent four hours from 9 p.m. till 1 a.m. that evening playing Avalon, uh, which is a really, really good board game. It's sort of like Mafia slash Werewolf, if you if you ever played that, but better because no one dies. Uh, the problem with Mafia and Werewolf is that people get eliminated as the game goes on, so it becomes less inclusive. But in Avalon, everyone is sort of taking part for the whole game, and it gets very, very heated and I've got some absolutely sick footage of us like swearing at each other and like shouting and screaming and it's incredible and I'm going to cut it into like a bloopers reel that we can look back on in like 10 years time um, but it's probably not quite fit for public consumption so yeah thank you very much for watching this video I really hope you found it useful if you liked it please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to the channel please consider doing so all the best with your revision and have a lovely day see you in the next video bye bye